Hello, I'm Kenny McMillan, and welcome to Tool Talk. Today on Tool Talk, we're going to be talking about post production in general, but Hedge specifically. Now, Hedge is a data copying program, not unlike um, Silverstack or Shotput or anything like that, but it's super, super easy and quick as hell. Usually, you know, you get these programs so that you have checksums, or which basically means you have a, a method for which to guarantee that. Uh, the bits and bytes went from point A to point B with no corruptions or anything getting lost or anything like that. And Hedge does it so fast. Usually it takes longer because of that process. So we'll get into that. But first, I wanted to talk about your data uh, as you make it. Uh, one thing that we learned from Phil Holland at his post-production workshop at Film Tools was that um, the camera really has two jobs, make the image and save the image. So because of that, you want to make sure that you have enough cards for the day, for the day's shoot. You don't want to end up in a situation where you wipe a card and you hadn't actually dumped it, or you don't want to keep writing over and over. You just you just want something where you can the card is saved, you can put it down, and nothing will happen to it until the end of the day when everything gets dumped. Maybe that's not possible for everyone. Just got to be really, really sure you're not uh, you know formatting a card that hadn't been dumped yet. On the subject of formatting, you want to make sure that you do that in the camera and not uh, on a computer. And the reason for that is simple. Um, the camera was meant to do that. The computer is meant to format, you know, drives, not necessarily memory cards. Now I'm sure we've all just deleted everything off a card or formatted it on a computer and nothing has happened. But again, we're talking best practices, not what technically works. Now on the subject of backups, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're not just dumping the footage onto a drive and then that's it. You're gonna want multiple backups in physical different spaces. You know, I subscribe to the idea that two is one, one is none. These are actually two backups of my friend's feature film, his documentary. So uh, they are with me because, again, you should have your backups in physical different places. You know, if his house gets hit by a meteor, we've still got it. So in regards to editing, what you're going to want to do is set up your drives in a very specific way. Now, this research was done by Puget Systems, so don't trust me, trust them. Your modest system will probably see a huge uptick in uh, its capabilities in regards to editing various footages. First things first, you want your OS and your programs on, you know, your C drive separate. I have an SSD for that. And then you want a separate SSD, preferably an NVMe, but I have the regular SATA SSDs and they work fine. That's going to be where your active footage is. So the footage that you're currently editing and that alone does a lot. Another thing you're going to want to do is get your cache and your scratch files and put them on another separate drive. I, again, have another SSD for that. But you, that can be a pretty small one because cache and scratch files don't take up a lot. Just doing that will speed up your workflow so much. I cannot overstate that. If you're going to edit off of a drive like this, something with Thunderbolt, if you're capable, would be a great idea. I, my computer is not Thunderbolt capable, um, which is a bummer. I'm going to need to get a new motherboard for that. Uh, if you're using a RAID, you're going to want to go with one of the redundant RAIDs. There's tons of various types of RAID setups out there. They are all various types of redundant. Basically, it just means if one of your drives fails, your data isn't lost. Now, if you're just editing off the drive and you've got multiple backups in place, then you might want to try RAID 0, which basically just means that uh, it's going to read both drives at once, which gives you faster throughput. Now, I have found that my SSD reads at like 500-ish uh, megabytes per second, and this G-RAID through USB 3 reads at about 300 something. So that's drives, that's setup, that's best practices. Now let's go into Hedge and show you how to use that to get the footage from your camera onto these drives uh, because that's what we're reviewing here. So here's how Hedge works. It's really simple. On the left, you've got your sources and on the right, you've got your destination. So in sources, uh, we're gonna choose this Canon A006. That is what I just shot the video that you're watching on. Um, that is a CF Express card. So 343 gigs, kind of big. Um, it's a handful it takes. If I really wanted to, I could uh, go to source folder and pick specifically just the CRM, or excuse me, just the contents here, you know, whatever. Uh, but I'll take the whole thing because it's just smart to do that. You can also label it um, C500 if I wanted to. And so that's fine. We're going to leave that like that. Now we're going to say, well, where do we want to put this footage? 
Well, I'm going to put it on my active drive. I'm going to put it on my G raid and I'm going to put it on my mobile SSD right here, right? So I'm going to have the drive I'm editing off of, um, a backup and another backup in the active folder. I actually want it to go somewhere specific. So we'll go, we'll make a new folder here. Actually, we'll call this hedge. And then on my G raid, we will do uh, projects, film tools, new folder, FT edge. There we go. And then on my mobile SSD, uh, we'll just leave it. It'll just be an exact copy. So once we've done that, and you can label these if you want, we can just hit go. Before you go, actually, it will, we'll, we can show you some other things. You can eject disks here. Um, and then in under settings, you can organize uh, what you're going to transfer. If you wanted to, you could do a folder structure. You can tell it to ignore files. So maybe you've got some kind of file you don't need transfer over transferred over. They've got XMLs and thumbs as an example. You can rename files um, if that's necessary. I tend to do uh, renaming uh, batch renaming after the fact, but uh, that is neither here nor there. And then you can also create folder structures, which you know is, is pretty cool if you want to make sure that each of these three uh, have the exact same folder structure. You don't have to design them on the drives. You can just do it here in the organized tab. So that's cool. So those are the settings. Then you just hit add three transfers and they will pop up simultaneously. And as you can see, it is now kicking the footage to those drives at pretty decent clip. Now, this is also doing the checksum. It's XX hash instead of MD5. So these speeds is about as quick as copy and pasting would be anyway, but you get the added benefit of the checksum to verify that everything is going as planned. So you just you just leave that and uh, let it go. There's the Connect app, which is on your phone. And when you read the article for this, uh, I can show you what that looks like. Obviously, I can't really. Well, I guess I can. Here it is. Isn't that exciting? All this is done with their fast lane system where you'll see all of these things are pretty much saturating the uh, connection. But in any case, that's it. So instead of making you wait for the next 21 minutes, uh, we will speed through this and we're done. And you just close that and you're back here. Let's say you you know, went and filmed more stuff on here, transfer it again, and it'll only transfer uh, the new files. It won't transfer the old ones. But on uh, these, you'll see that you've got hedge media hash lists, which are MHL files, but I've found you can just open them in Notepad. Uh, and that's just your list with the hashes and uh, all that. And so that's how you know that every single bit and byte has gone from the uh, SD card, or excuse me, the CFast Express card, or whatever you're using, the media, and the destination files. Also, you can use different sources. It doesn't have to be one source. It can be multiple sources. So we can see on our G drive here, boom, same thing, transfer log, success, 343 gigs, uh, took 2,400 seconds, start at 11.11, how about that, end at 11.52. So, you know, if you were dumping footage, I'm sure that's short enough time that, you know, you won't be on set fretting like, oh, the card's not dumped yet. Because I think, you know, if you're shooting on one of these cards, you get at least an hour of 4K. So, and if you'd like, you can just take these, put them back, and you're ready for the next transfer. So that's it from me. That's it from Hedge. Uh, I hope that you found this informative. Uh, really, I hope you take the drive management thing home. I can't overstate how important that is. Uh, and give Hedge a shot, because if you are dumping important footage from your day-to-day uh, -day shooting activities, um, you know, you're going to want to make sure that they are backed up and safe. You don't want to trust the gremlins uh, inside your computer to do it for you. So that's it. We will see you next time when we review something else. Okay. Normally I'd go somewhere, but uh, I don't have anywhere to go. So I'll just hang out.
What do you guys want to talk about? You know what? I never say that. Let's move on. Now, now it's Kenny talk. Obviously, we're stuck at home. Uh, I'm actually stuck in the uh, Film Tools gambling den, as you can see. Um, they didn't come to get me when when the uh, pandemic started, so I'm just kind of sitting here, and I'm bored. So if you've got any questions or any products you'd like reviewed, uh, feel free to let us, them, know, and I can answer them for you. We've got a lot of stuff that we can play with. Um, you know, I've been doing a lot of stuff with the C500. If you go over to the Owlbot YouTube, you can see a test that we did between the C500, the Alexa LF, the Venice, and the FX9. Um, that was if you'll see that in the fourth wall playlist. Uh, that was done with Stray Angel, and um, you know that was fun. What else is new out there? C300 Mark III just got announced, which is basically a C500 with a Super 35 sensor. Uh, it's a new sensor. And it has a like a new, more sensitive, it, it, they're, dual gain output, they're calling it, which is not dual ISO. It just means that it like basically, I think, records the image twice, one bright, one dark. It's like HDRX, kind of. Uh, and then it can shoot 4K up to 120 in RAW, which is pretty cool. So your choices kind of are, do you want full frame 6K with a C500 or do you want Super 35 120? 4K. Personally, I shoot almost no high speed stuff. I, everything's at 24 frames, so I will take the full frame uh, 6K. But if you're doing whatever it is that needs 120 frames, everyone's been asking for it. There you go. That's new. The red Komodo should be coming out any day. I really hope I get to check that out. That would be really cool. I'll be reviewing a webcam coming up. That's <laughs> from Lumens. That's uh, webcams have gotten crazy. You got, uh, I went to, I was going to do uh, some streaming on Twitch because I got a Valorant beta and uh, I didn't want to use my face. I wanted to do character animator, Adobe character animator, which I was able to uh, use the puppet's mouth with the microphone, but I couldn't, I didn't have a webcam. So I went to go figure out, I was like, I'll get a $30 webcam. No, the world is out of webcams. They're all $400. Uh, no matter what one, but I got a really nice one sent to me by Lumens uh, to review. So uh, it's it's meant for boardrooms and stuff. You know, you put it on a big TV. And you look at the guys overseas who want to yell at you. Uh, but it's really nice. It was I was actually pretty shocked at that. So look forward to that. And um, that's about it. That's all I got. Any other updates? No.